or two. My name is Lloyd Olson. I've been posting as LTG on Pimal news groups and forums and everything since about 1996, though the LTG goes back to the mid-70s uh, when they didn't have battery backup on video games. I've been in the industry my whole life. I was four years old, standing on stools, scrubbing play fields. You know, I've had uh, my arcade uh, over 51 years, test operator for Lieberman Music Company for 19 years, uh, still with Planetary Pinball Supply in Chicago Gaming, worked for Texport for JJP for eight and a half years, and on Rec Games Pinball, I had an excess of 50,000 posts. I don't know how many posts on Penn's side, and I always laugh when they come up with this SEO shit. You know, you can't Google pinball without running into me. But anyway, if that's who I am. Scott's got a question. Weren't you raising your hand? Your hairdo? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I usually start with a couple of public service announcements. You're at Expo, you're having a lot of fun, you're going out, your friend's drinking. Crash sites do become DUI investigations. You gotta watch that one. And something else too, I, I call it profiling, but the Chicago police are on it real bad this year. If you're driving down the sidewalk, they are gonna stop you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my show is uh, generally a lot of uh, fun and games, usually degenerates into something really bad really quick. And uh, that's Martin I up there with Pinball News. You know, if you know Martin I, you're probably a pin nut. <laughs> if you play pinball like Rick Stetta, you're definitely a pin nut. If you know who Rick Stetta is, you're beyond hope. And if you watch the Twippy Awards, you know, you're definitely a pin nut. So anyway, we usually have questions and answers and all kinds of fun. So, and we got, I don't know, 40 mugs or something to give out. Very limited edition this year, and they weren't quite what I wanted, but we do have mugs. So why don't we start with questions and answers. Anybody got anything dying that they want to hear about? Boy, this went to hell quick. Yeah, one over there. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. How's your dog doing? Well, she's 19. She's got a tumor on her chest we can't do anything about. Uh, she's at a customer's house right now. Sadly, we're on the downhill slide, obviously. She's still you know, eating and drinking and going for walks. She sleeps more, and we can still run to the door and bark. Yeah. Still bark for pepperoni. Oh, and uh, yeah, we have pizza, and she gets all Jackson's pepperoni. She will bark for that. We've had to start doing extra pepperoni just so I can get some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> VIP. Uh, I was 18. I was young. I was in shape. I was about 170 pounds lighter. 170 pounds total. Uh, had jet black hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I've been kind of blessed on a lot of this stuff. I mean, I've gone through the EM era into the start of the solid state era. Uh, my mother and I bought the business together, and she, uh, there's an operator there. She cannot buy games. And that, all the stuff at that point was EMs. If you look on my website, there's a picture from spring of 73, and there's a superstar, a jungle lord, uh, a jungle king. Uh, Flight 2000, a few other things. And uh, I started the, with the Solid State. First thing I bought brand new, first game I ever got brand new was Gottlieb's Pinball Pool, which led to kind of a war with the operator. And eventually we parted, uh, well, I just called him up, told him, get your shit out of there. But, you know, we kind of parted ways. And uh, there was a time I would have been really scared about that because uh, there was only about 20 years before that Lieberman Music Company, when they were up on Penn Avenue in North Minneapolis, they had a bomb go off in their door. I mean, this, this industry plays for keeps, but I've got an attitude problem, and I've worked at Advance Carter for a year, and they kind of knew me, and I think that saved a lot of problems for both of us. <laughs> I had a foreman that, uh, he's sadly deceased now, but he was yelling at me about something some day, one day, and I don't remember what, but he's standing on one of these forklifts you push. I run his ass up to the ceiling, <laughs> and I left him up there. I mean, I'm making 15 cents an hour less than minimum wage. Go ahead, fire me. This is a job. I need a career. <laughs> then when Arvid Anderson, I think he's gotten out too, one of the techs, he goes by and shakes him. And, yeah, I've uh, been blessed. I've, uh, a friend of mine told me in the mid-'90s, you forgot more fun than most people have ever had. Oh, wait. We didn't give that lady a mug. 
Yeah, see so if you do something, oh, and I don't know, you know, usually I ask questions and then I forget I should re-ask them because they don't always record good. So if uh, she was asking how my dog Prada was doing and, you know, we're plugging along. Uh, just a second. Uh, yes, sir. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate the patronage. I appreciate the kind words. And, and you yeah, you didn't have to lie like that. Just give a mug. I mean, we're we're we're, we're, we're giving mugs out. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Fooled another one. Did I get it right? Were you able to fix it? Oh, yay, got one right. That's always nice. I hate when we blow things up. Yes, sir. I didn't, sorry if I missed anybody. I just saw a hand back here at the same time. Yes, sir. Well, back in the day when things were great, that would be the game I'd trade. You know, once in a while you get one that just pisses you off and it just ain't, it just, yeah, I got enough to do. Yeah, you know, I just don't need to grief. We got to get that man a mug. Thank you for all the stuff you, you taught me multiple times too. I gave when I first started out and didn't know what I was doing. Did I get any of them right? Oh. Yay! It's always nice when I get one right. Thank you. Oh, just a second here. Where are we? I'm sorry, you got all these hands going up now. Uh, oh boy, I don't know where to start. Koi? How many, how many kids are in your arcade at the moment? 22. Soon to be 23. I don't know how I'm going to figure that out yet, but you know, right now 22. And that's probably the most that have been there. You know, it's gone up and down through the years, like when the video fed was hot in uh, 7981, I was probably down to six pins. And the same when Williams uh, was going to Pinball 2000, I'm trading games for dog shit, and I didn't want to get stuck with them like when they went from EMs to solid state. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> Williams closed. That was really nice of my distributor to tell me that one. Second largest distributor in the world. They knew that division was closing, but did they bother to tell anybody? No. Did you get a mug? Good. Wait, wait one second here. I want to get this lady way back there because she wants me to take this vitamin B crap, and I don't even know what it is. It gives you frizzy hair. Look what it did to that poor lady. Well, didn't she have a question? Yes. Pop machine. <laughs> Pop machine. No, the lady asked well, what my best game is right now as far as earning me income. It's kind of a toss-up right now between Hobbit, my original Medieval Madness, and Godfather Collector Edition. Uh, games get what I get a call a personality. You know, like if you had five Pac-Men in a row, all the money's going to be in one. Might not look the prettiest, might not play the best, but people come in for it. They love it. And my original Medieval Madness has been like, that thing's a cash register. Any time I got knee quarters to roll, that's got him. Hobbit is the one JJP pin that's always been great. I'm not uh, counting Godfather yet because it's kind of too new to, you know, see if that's going to stay in that range. And, uh, oh, my Walking Dead's a great one, too, that uh, people come in just to play. Of course, I got the bootleg software in there from the series, not the Stern people. So it's a little bit uh, a great, uh, what would I say, aggressive language to be played, but nobody seems to mind. When I had the Bill Paxton pin there, I had a lot of complaints on Night Game, but nobody is, and a few people complained about Big Bang Bar, but nobody has yet complained about Walking Dead, and that's way worse than anything I ever had. Yes, sir. Oh, just sorry. Well, I generally, you know, I've got ones I responded to, and then I look through new ones. You know, if I'm sitting at work and I'm open and I'm not really busy, there's not a lot I can do when I'm open. Well, that's why I'm doing the tech support stuff. 
gentleman was asking uh, about how I scan the different threads on pin side and keep up with them. And, and I mean, there's some people I just ignore. You, know, you piss me off. You don't need my help. My games work. I don't need you. <laughs> Yeah, somebody had remarked one time, I think back I had 320 down, uh, thumbs down. I think I'm up to 420. And I said, that ain't thumbs down. That's 320 people don't need my help. <laughs> I don't get paid for this shit. <laughs> did, you, did we get him a mug? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm working my way back here. Back in the day, who was a better deal negotiator, you or your mom? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I think depending on what... You know, if we're talking cars, man, she had the guy down downtown Chevy uh, town uh, running circles. He ended up losing money on a deal. No, Ma, Ma was special. She was, she was ornery, too. I always thought she was going to be around for forever. You knew right where you stood with her. She, she had no problem letting you know. And she's hit more people than I ever did, at least so far. Yeah, one of the funny ones, there was, uh, you know, when she, she had to go to work for my dad for briefly. They were divorced when I was eight years old. And she went to work in his arcade once on 6th Hennepin. And uh, upstairs in, in Minneapolis that time, he had to be 18 to play pinball. And there was a tall guy playing pinball. And she went over just out of the blue. And I asked her, how old are you? Well, 17. She's like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, you got to be 18. Yeah, I'll give you your quarterback. He's like, fuck you, bitch. Oh, big mistake. My mom was shorter than me. She had to reach up to get this guy. She clocked him like you wouldn't believe. He went running out of there. Uh, about a week later, he was coming up because it was like 32 stairs to get up there. He's coming upstairs, and she looked at him. Don't hit me, don't hit me. <laughs> Put the fear of God in him. Scott, oh, I'm sorry. Just like. I'm sorry? Thank you for your share about Well, my dad. Uh, he went to work for an operator when he came home from the war in 45. And, uh, uh, God, I can see that guy playing his name. Guy died young, and him and another guy bought the route out from the widow. And uh, when the freeways went through, you know, like all smaller uh, route operators, they probably had 25 locations. You know, five, ten are making the money, five you should get rid of. And well, when the freeways went through, wiped out his best spots. And so that's when he bought the Rifle Sport Arcade that was on uh, 8th and Hennepin. Been there f since like the late 40s or something. And then uh, he lost his lease. Uh, the Poodle uh, bought the Anthony Hotel and kicked him out in 1970. And he moved up on 6th and Hennepin. And uh, he was there till he died in September 81. My sister moved it down to 5th uh, and Hennepin and renamed it Pops. And she was there till October 2001 and she closed. Who said that? Where do we start that one? Oh, that was Scott again. You already got a mug. Let's see. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. What's your question? You just want a mug? Well, you gotta, you got to ask some like really entertaining question. Otherwise, I'm going to be up here telling jokes like, why do Italians hate Jehovah's Witnesses? <laughs> they hate all witnesses. <laughs> I had another good joke, too, but I'm probably not allowed to say it. Want to give him a mug? Oh, yeah. you Did I hear an accent? Are you from another country? Germany. Oh, Germany. Welcome. Thank you. We're working our way back. Oh, we got three, four now. Hang on a second, because some of these are getting st stale. I'll get over there as quick as I can. The lady in the red, uh, whatever. Uh, I don't want to say who I sold it to. You know, when I got close the first time for COVID, I hadn't used it in a year and a half. The wall factor was long gone, and it had some issues. And uh, I don't know if the uh, present owner wants it known. But uh, I had it for four years, and uh, uh, that's when we were doing a refresh. And it just happened the guy that was doing a refresh was good friends with Ben Heckendorn. So we went, like, to the top of the list to buy it. And it was, it was great for, you know, a long time. But like I say, the wall factor was long gone. Even if I repaired it, I was never going to use it anymore. It was fragile as Ben's first game. And it just, it was not meant for commercial use. Ben was amazed I got four years out of it. And like I say, that game got me more complaints than any other. The speakers were on the side. I even put it over on the side so you couldn't hear it. And people still complain because they had call-outs from a lot of the movies and stuff. It's not like you're going to fall over in the back of the panties down in their legs in the air. Oh, Jesus. That had some great movie quotes in there. Of course, like I say, my Walking Dead is way worse. 
you you got Negan in there. You see what they did? They just slipped my dick down your throat. And uh, nobody's complained about him yet. I had one typical Saturday. I had a uh, mom and a dad, and two little kids come in, and mom goes over and hits the start button, and before there's money in it, you bastards! Oh boy, I'm gonna get it now. And she just mm, never said a word. Did we get you a mug? Okay, and I saw one back. Yes, sir. Boy, I don't know if I've ever really narrowed that down. I mean, there's so many thousands of them, and you got to bear in mind, of course, now I don't uh, help JJP anymore, but there was a time I was rocking four phones, two email addresses, you know, Rec Games pinball I check once a day, uh, Facebook, pin side, people stopping in. I mean, it's just, it'd be hard to just pick one out. You know, I don't think, you know, because most of the manufacturers right now are, you know, building some pretty good crap, and there's not like one that stands out that, uh, oh, God, another one of these. But, uh, you know, I've been pretty fortunate on that. Did you get a mug? Yes. Hey, my helpers are on the ball. Thank you, helpers. Uh, then I saw, oh, there's that lady, too. I'm sorry, I almost forgot you. No, you. Yeah, blow up a lot of crap. <laughs> Remember, I was four years old scrubbing play fields. We didn't have Google. We didn't have PinWiki. We didn't have PinSide. We didn't have uh, Rec Games Pinball. You know, you learn by doing. So how do you, how do you really get I said you blow up a lot of crap. I'm, I've just, I'm not great at fixing stuff. I've just blown up more stuff than the average person. There's one day I'm working on uh, Bride of Pinbot. I blew up three driver boards in a row because I couldn't remember how to plug the damn thing in. Three of them. <laughs> I learned by the fourth one. No, and also, you know, like I, you know, my dad being an operator, you know, I'd be sitting on the floor of a shop, and, uh, you know, eventually he left me loose with a soldering iron when I was about three years old. And I had a piece of plywood, and I had every relay and stepper unit, everything in the world nailed down. And I had anything that could have, anything that had a lug got a wire. And I had this thing, this thing, you could not solder any more wire anywhere. And my dad's looking at it, and I'm like, let's plug it in. <laughs> he just, he went white. <laughs> so then after that, we actually built something that uh, I could plug in and worked. And, you know, it's just that uh, I've always been around games. I mean, and, you know, something broke, you had to fix it. EMs were the easiest because outside of score reels, everything in that game you can fix with a uh, spot welder. And the thing is, you know, like a lot of people, uh, like I've said, I've run into a lot of people that they just don't have the technical ability. I've spent a half an hour on the phone many times trying to teach somebody how to use a screwdriver. I mean, you know, everybody's gifts are different. I mean, there's like, you know, pinball players that are tournament players, and then there's me that suck. And I mean, it's just everybody's got different skill levels, but, you know, get a cheap game so you don't lose a lot of money, try and get it going, and uh, you'll learn from there. And because you do have a lot of resources at your fingertips. There might be fellow collectors to help you. There might be, uh, like I said, PinWiki and Rec Games. Pinball's kind of dead, but you know, PinSide and Facebook, there's a, a ton of free help out there, and people that want to want to help you with your game, and you know, start with something simple and get it going, and you'll grow from there. That's how Dan started, didn't you? Pardon? Uh, so I got started taxi. Yeah. Yeah, Jackson was blowing up stuff when he was 12 years old. <laughs> Hang on, Scott. We got a couple of questions over this direction. Otherwise, I'm going to start telling jokes again. We don't want that. Yes, sir. Oh, God, you couldn't pay me to do that? No. I mean, I've had some instances where somebody will bring in a game and I'll, I'll help them or show them what to do. But I usually try to stay out of that stuff because you get married to them. Yeah. Same with home repairs. That is the worst. You fix a flipper, two years later, pop bumper breaks. They're hauling you in a conciliation court suing you. I mean, just there ain't enough uh, out there for that aggravation. I mean, how I got into doing the, the tech support stuff for uh, the companies, Rick with Bay Area Amusements, because way back, I mean, way back on uh, Rick Games Pinball, I used to have a list of uh, uh, for amusement only, and I think, I don't think Pinball Life is going in, Pinball Resource, some of the places for parts. And he asked me, you know, how much to, you know, for me to put them on that list that I mail out. And I was thinking, oh, 1500 bucks, 10% off my orders. But I didn't know. I said, I, I didn't know, Rick, so I put them on there. Well, then some years went by. 
uh, with Bay Area Amusements when they increased the website and they added a forum and stuff, and he asked me to help him on the forum. Yeah, no problem. Well, then he wanted to pay me. I said, we don't know what this is going to be. I said, we're both grown men. If it gets to be a labor intensive, if it gets to be something, we can talk. If it ain't much, I don't mind helping you. And then that morphed into, well, first, uh, Jersey Jack Pinball had put a thing on their uh, Google page. They needed a tech. And I had just it had gone up, and three seconds later, I'm like, me, 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 me. I was just kidding because he wanted somebody in-house while well, the ball was rolling. It was like, 20 or 30 people posted, yeah, go on, let's go. So the next day, Jack did hire me. And of course, I talked to him at that time too because Planetary Pinball Supply, I said, I know you and Rick are buddies. I know you've got parts agreements and everything else. You know, if this is a problem, you know, we're going to talk now. And he's, oh, no, no problem. And then, of course, then when Planetary Pinball at Expo, Rick announces Medieval Madness. And uh, then afterwards, him and uh, Doug Duba talked to me and wanted to help him with tech support. Now that, well, now we might have a problem, but at that time, uh, Pinball Sales was a distributor for them. So it was more, no problems up until more recent times. And so anyway, that's how the progression, you know, how I got into doing tech support stuff. Uh, let's see. Why don't, um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hang on, just, I'll get right with you, please. Yes, sir. Same as building a new pin. You know, you, even if you got the engineering drawings, this, that, and everything else, you know, it's start over. A lot of cases, uh, especially post-COVID, you know, you got to find uh, companies that can build the parts if they aren't there anymore. Yeah, get them to build them right, because they make, make 200 right, and then uh, 100 of them are scrap. I mean, Chicago Gaming, I know, has gone through a lot of that post-COVID and stuff. And uh, so basically, you know, just because it's an older game, you know, you ain't going to see, you know, uh, Funhouse built for 2200 bucks anymore. You know, it would be up in the same level as everything else because just about everything in there is going to have to be re-engineered and made and worked on and brought up to speed and uh, it's a process. Might be 1%, 2% easier or something because you got some stuff, but it's going to be like from the ground up. Every decade has brought some changes Yep. And then I, this gentleman, yes sir. Uh, it's true, I like Beauregard. You know, he's running around here somewhere, Rob Anthony. And then on the uh, pin side, Chris Hibbler. He posts just as that one word, Chris Hibbler. They're top of the line. And, uh, God, I can't think of that. There's one other guy, too. He's from England, and he moved here. Yeah, pardon? Clyde. Yeah, Clyde's a, a great uh, resource, too, for board repair. Yeah, there's others that come and go and stuff, but... It seemed like locally there's only two guys I recommend for tech, uh, for you know, fixing home games. There's what I call pinball jockeys, but there's only two that I would recommend. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and that was after the uh, Clay's guides kind of went uh, complete. Uh, Poo, and uh, Pin Wiki really took off, and uh, yeah, Chris Hibbler is one of the driving forces on there. And he's a nice guy too. That's important too when you're dealing with people. You know, like the Pinball Liz years ago that had the repair guides and everything else. You know, you're, he he was great. He could do anything. He could fix anything. He could tell you how to do it. But he was his personality was very dry. But he's a great man. I've, I haven't had heard from him for years. I don't know if he's even still alive anymore. But uh, he had uh, made the nylon board and a lot of stuff, but almost everything he had uh, made got ripped off and copied, and he just, he just dropped out of pinball. He's like, I just don't need this grief. But like I say, he was one of the greatest. But you read his repair guides, it's like reading the telephone book. But the, the information's there. You just got to bear through it. Did I see another hand? Oh, there's one back there. Yes, sir. Not really. I mean, you know, when people are looking for their first pin and everything else, as a suggestion, I usually tell them to, you know, cruise the uh, Williams DMD era games. If nothing else for the fact, you've got a never-ending supply of cheap parts out there. 
you know, Chicago Coin, Data East, Stern, Sega, Sega Stern, Capcom, Gottlieb, if you can find the parts, they're going to be very costly. And that's, that's a good place to start. So, you know, they got a pin. There's going to be a lot of help, and they're not going to have a money pit that uh, they can ever get going. Did you get a mug? Boy, you guys are moving fast. Yes, sir. Is there any one game that stands out as an all-time afterburner that you've had? Two. Afterburner, I had a sit-down afterburner, and uh, Asteroids. Well, asteroids, for the mere fact I had it over 11 years, you know, during the summer it would uh, die off, but every fall and winter when pool would pick up, anybody can play asteroids. You know, guy, somebody that isn't into uh, video games, you know, he looks at a game that's got two joysticks and six buttons, you know, he's lost, but he'll throw a quarter in asteroids. Jeez, asteroids couldn't have been much. I'd guess two grand or less. Yeah, Afterburner, that one was pricier. That, I think, was like 12 or 15 grand. But both games grossed over 100 grand. And the mistake with Afterburner, uh, to coin it up, you had to have a person standing outside. You know, when your time, uh, when you died, whatever, there were 23 stages, and then you come back in to land on the aircraft carrier. And you had to almost have somebody outside because when you put, it was a dollar, so that's four quarters. When you put a quarter in, didn't reset the timer. And you only had eight seconds to get those quarters in. You know, if that thing would have had a tower on it like uh, Virtual Racer, ones, twos, tens, twenties stuff, you know, people would have been dumping twenties in that thing. That thing would have been phenomenal if they'd done it. But nobody knew at that time. I was a pioneer on uh, putting a bill validator on uh, games. You know, I got a coin door for my atoms and put a bill validator on that. Gee, that was all kinds of fun. Because nobody, you know, I called Cecil uh, Walk at uh, Lieberman's, you know, to see if he'd uh, had any, you know, some of the stuff I ran into. And, well, gee, nobody's ever really done one of them before. <laughs> cool, thank you. But got it going. Yes, sir. You don't like her that much, do you? I gotta make a decision. Yeah, we're gonna miss her. <laughs> Decisions made. Just tell her, honey, you gotta go. There's this asshole last night by the name of Lloyd. He said, you gotta go. You're out of here. Hit the bricks and don't come back no more, no more. Yes, sir. Um, what are your thoughts on the PIM 2000 platform and maybe reviving one that's got a, you know, dead CPU? Uh, best thing, talk to Rob Anthony. He, uh, I don't know if he really does that anymore, but at one point he was the king of that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a shame, you know, Neil and Castro and company, they're shutting that division down no matter what. They shut down everything. You know, Midway, touchscreen games, uh, advanced, I mean, they just, you know, hold, they were going to gambling. And they, of course, they didn't tell anybody, but, you know, Pinball 2000, when it came out, was not popular with the pinball people. But the non-pinball people were dumping money in them. And they weren't tied to one level or anything else. And that would have been the next evolution. It's just one of those things that greater than it could have been. It's like Capcom made four pins in one year and two prototypes, three prototypes. And, uh, you know, again, the greatest of what could have been, it just wasn't allowed to happen. Can I see another hand? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I don't know if I've ever really, except for, you know, a couple of highlights, high years, you know, during the video fad and during when the fighting games came back in the early 90s, but I've generally not had the uh, body count that that would be doable. You know, you got, you know, every location is different. You got to look at what you're going to try to achieve, what's possible. And for me, coin op has always been the best. And then some of them, too, if they got the cards or anything, you know, the card might be go good for five hours or something. Yeah, somebody, their time is up. I want to go kick them out in the middle of a great game. No, I, I just always, and then also, I never operated on tokens either. You know, the thing with that, when the ads in the magazines, when everybody was gung-ho during the video fad on tokens, the ads were, once you made the, sold the token, you made the sale. 
That ain't right. You know, somebody who's a customer, somebody who's good enough to come in my business and put money in my games, they deserve value. And people had asked me, why don't you go to Tokens? Hey, that'd be great for me. Here's four pieces of brass. Give me your dollar. What do you mean? Well, I just gave you three, four cents worth of brass. I don't care if you play my games or not. You know, I already got your buck. And to me, that's, it might not be dishonest, but it just ain't the way to treat people. And but, but like I say on the you know, paper play and everything else, some places it's a great idea. You know, for my uh, location, it's just I don't think it would ever work, and I'm not going to try. I got enough problems without uh, chasing bankruptcy again. More questions? Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to jokes. We don't want that. Yes, sir. Well, a lot of people, I mean, it's it, like I say, you know, the, at that time, the pinball people weren't real wild about it, but the non-pinball people dumped money in it. But I think with Williams closing, kind of, you know, like made it a black sheep, you know, where a lot of other manufacturers and stuff is, you know, this ain't the way to go. You know, like when Jack did Wizard of Oz, you know, like Lyman Sheets told me one time, we were talking to Midwest Gaming Classic a few years back, and... Uh, you know, he was point blank. Stern was not building what Jack could sell his customers. And Jack, you know, really, I mean, Gary Stern, I mean, to me, this is a great man. He won the greatest ever in pinball. I mean, worst decade ever in coin up. He kept it going. You know, we owe everything to, you know, the hobby, the, the operators, everything. Everything is owed to, you know, Gary Stern, hands down. And, uh, but like I say, you know, Jet Wizard of Oz kind of made you pinballs never had the fad you know when the video fad was on 50,000 arcades opened up and all you couldn't and not everybody could get pac-man that day so they'd fill up spaces with pinball and as soon as they got their pac-man game the pinball went out and pinball always grew by leaps you know it was mechanical then they added a battery then they had electricity you know, then they had the back box with the pretty lights for 10, 20, 30, 40. You know, then all of a sudden you had a couple of score reels. Then you had some dummy score reels. You know, eventually you had some alphanumeric. Eventually you had DMD. I mean, oh, and then different things too. You had pop bumpers that were dead. Then you had pop bumpers that worked. Steve Kordak is another great man in pinball. When he was, uh, you know, standing trying to get out of the rain at uh, Chicago Coin, uh, he went, hey, what do you guys do? Well, they hired him. Well, he was the one that noticed, you know, your flippers are up here. Well, the action's down there. They moved to flippers. You know, we owe that to Steve Kordick, a great man. But anyway, I was saying, you know, pinball has always had these leaps. And, you know, Wizard of Oz, you know, took the next big leap, which you look at all the stuff now that's going on with displays and toys and the deep programming and all kinds of miscellaneous you know, that was, that was a big leap. It took it to the next level. If and when we ever get another one, you know, who knows, but. So with the 3D or the hologram technology that was so expensive and too complicated, I would like to see that feature. Yeah, well, like I say, you know, Williams is closing that division. That did better than they planned. But Nicastro is closing that division no matter what. Yeah, they closed, you know, the... Uh, the touchscreen games, you know, Midway touchscreen games, they thought they were going to continue anyway. And then later they might build another Pinball 2000 like once a year, once every two years. But Nicastro shut it all down. They're going gambling no matter what. But like I say, I think it just carried a bad stigma with it that no other uh, companies took a look at doing something like that. You know, well, it killed Williams. It didn't really, but, you know, it killed Williams. Of course, actually, South Park did a pretty good job on that. That thing isn't even a pinball. And God, that thing hauls in money. You know, and the talking turd killed Williams. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I don't know if I've ever really seen a step back. I mean, you know, people bemoan change that, uh, you know, because they're not used to stuff. But, uh, you know, generally they either quit or they adapt to it. I saw another hand here, too. Oh, there it is. Yes, sir. Yeah, just uh, curious. The new games have a lot of uh, surface mount components. Don't be scared. Are you someone who advocates desoldering those, or is it basically replacing? 
that's just a new technology you got to learn. You know, it's something new. A lot of people are, oh my God, this guy's falling, this guy's falling. Well, you need a little bit different equipment. You need to learn a different skill set. They are repairable. You just got to know what you're doing or have somebody that can do it. You're late. Okay, that's okay. I mean, you know, like I say, in, in a lot of companies now, like with Chicago Gaming, you know, the driver board stuff, yeah, there is surface-mounted stuff, but your important stuff, your transistors and stuff, are still through hole, so down the road you can work on them. But it's just, you know, there's always going to be change, like it or not. Do you gentlemen have a question? What? Well, that's the only way you get a mug. Hey, do we have any mugs left? Before? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, pinball or video game? video game? Wizard of War. That game cheated. That was the worst game ever. You know, it was one of the old shooters, and when you shot, you only had one bullet at a time. And until it hit something or hit a wall, you didn't have another bullet. When you fired, you don't know if it's going out your gun, out your back, out your feet, or out your head. And I just love that game. It was just fun. You know, when you run out the tunnel here, you could come out the tunnel there. Not always, you might come out somewhere else. Then you got to find out where your guy went. And I've just, I just love, I used to like kill people at that game. I just love that thing. I don't know why. Because, you know, most video games I suck at, but for some reason I could play that damn thing. Yep. Except for, uh, I'd usually be the left player, and my buddy Terry, whenever he'd pop out, it'd be like ringing the dinner bell. All the monsters would just run ass for him. <laughs> Pardon? Yes, sir. I'm a poor person to ask on that. You know, my honest opinion, because I've seen it with my Attack from Mars and Monster Bash, I never had a Cactus Canyon. I had them several times for events and they stayed, but I, yeah, I never owned one. But, you know, you got a game that's 20 years newer. But now, see, the one problem is, like I say, I can't really say on Medieval Madness. My original Medieval Madness has got a personality that people love. You know, not every game has that. Like I was telling the audience earlier, if you had five Pac-Men in a row, all the money's going to be in one. Might not be the prettiest, might not play the best, but people love it. And I've been fortunate. I've had a few games like that. My Medieval Madness is one. Anytime I'm short of quarters and i got to get some in a cash register, roll them, that thing's a cash register. It's always full. You know, and I, you know, years, oh, man, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, something. Yeah, probably 15 years ago when Bill Davis was clear-coding playfields. I was down to bare wooden stuff in a lot of spots, and I pulled the play field out of there, and I sent it down to Bill Davis to get it touched up and clear-coated, and I had a different medieval man. This was like brand new, and it was, wasn't was getting played. And I was like, what in the hell? It's in better shape than mine. I shopped it. It's clean. It's better. newer. It's better. And uh, innocently, one of my players was like, oh, gee, I just played so much better. Oh, man, I'd have run it down to bare wood if I'd have known that. Well, when I got it back out to play field, I got it back up, got it on the floor, pee, money went back up on it. So he's locked here. You know, Doug Duba with Chicago Gaming, when I got my Medieval Madness, he was like, well, now you can sell your original Medieval Madness. I didn't tell him nothing. I mean, he's a great guy and all, but no, that'd probably be the last game out of there. And, but then, like, when I got my attack, remake Attack from Mars, that, all, that took over what Attack from Mars was doing, so Attack from Mars became sellable for, then when I got my ACDC uh, Lucy Vault. Yep. Well, so, you know, there's a lot of people, some people love our originals and some people, I just like them because all your crap in there is, you know, 23, 24 years newer. Sure, sure. Same parts. Now, now see, Lex Smith became Churchill Cabinet Company, became Chicago Gaming. It's the same company that made Playfields and Cabinets for Williams. And then you got, uh, you know, Williams no longer there, but all Williams parts in there, they're made under license or whatever by the, a lot of the companies and stuff that made for Williams. And, uh, you know, like I say to me, it's, you know, it's, you know, head and shoulders newer than the other ones. Okay. Yes, sir. Just a comment. I have an original Medieval Madness and somebody has a remake. And I think Chicago Gaming did a wonderful job. That gets played very, very close. Yep. 
And people get favorites too. I don't begrudge anybody if they like the original or if they like the, the remake. But uh, I just look at it as especially, you know, if you only got one game and you're going to be working on it and you don't know an awful lot, you know, do you want the one that's 25 years old or do you want the one that's brand new? And then, and also, you know, what they've tricked them up to, you know, now you got the big displays, the speaker lights, the toppers, and everything else. I mean, they really set the world on fire on some great stuff. Yes, Scott. Uh, if you got the bootleg ROM, that's a hacked ROM. It's just one word, and really the bleeped word is uh, funnier. That's like Terminator 2, the dirty ROM for that. It's got to be free play only, and once every 20 games you get one dirty word. Yeah, that's worthwhile. Now, Demolition Man, that's uh, like eight sound ROMs and a game ROM. Uh, that one's got an extensive, but that, again, it's free play only, but that one's got an extensive... Uh, Nasty, both DMD graphics and uh, language. There was a guy who went to work for Williams, and they gave him a demolition man to learn their source code on, and he learned their source code. <laughs> yes, sir. What the hell's a right to repair? I'm, I'm just, I'm asking because I'm just, I don't, I don't want to answer something I don't know anything about. And you're looking at it in the engine compartment, and you, where the hell do I start? So yeah. Yeah, pinball being a niche market, I don't think that's going to happen. But I know some of the companies, and, uh, you know, I am biased. You know, Chicago Gaming has kept a close eye on, you know, making them easy to service, making them dependable, and also the price point, trying to keep them affordable, too. Like Cactus Canyon, uh, the souped-up one with a topper, I think it was like 9800 I mean, you know, they're, they're very conscientious of their customer base. And, uh, you know... Doug Duba is committed to, you know, pleasing his customers. And I'm not saying other companies aren't or anything, but I just, my experience with them is, you know, they're, they're not uh, trying to make everything impossible to work on or anything else like we were talking earlier about the surface mount stuff. That's, that's the way of technology. That, would, that had nothing to do with pinball. And it's just, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just you're going to need different tools and different, you're going to have to, you know, be educated in it. It's nothing impossible. Yes, sir. God, I hope it never comes to that. I mean, you know, Stern's the, the gorilla in the room. I mean, they're making bigger and better than everybody else. But uh, I personally, I hope nothing like that happens. And I know at least like from an operator standpoint, it'll probably fail. When Nolan Bushnell started, uh, his, when he got back, you know, after, uh, you know, he sold Atari and then he couldn't uh, be in the industry for years. And when he came back with uh, the Sente system, that originally was going to be cartridges and the operators would lease them for 175 bucks a month. And of course I question, well, how long do I have to have this? And it's beautiful. You know, he had 27 games, 25 of them shouldn't have been built. But it was a metal cabinet, it's beautiful. I mean, it really well thought out. And then Bally took it over and then they just were selling the games. But uh, that 175 a month, I question, well, if it's a good game, what if he wants it back soon? If it's a lemon, what if I'm stuck with it for three years? You know, that paying per month crap, it's just never, that kind of tweaks my melon. It'd be something I'd never do. And I know Stern now, I know Stern was leaving money on the tables. You know, like when they make a topper, you know, they can make a special code or something for it and stuff. But, you know, if there'd be a monthly fee, I don't know if that would ever wash or not.
Yeah. Well, they kick around a lot of ideas, and you know, probably 75% of them never hit fruitation. But that one would probably be a disaster. That'd be a good way of driving all your customers to some other uh, manufacturer. Yes, sir. You know, I, I don't think I, I've ever really had one that aggravated me that bad. And there have been some people. <laughs> well, like one, one uh, many, about 20 years ago, I had a good customer, uh, was younger, and his sister came in with an XL's Angel guy. And this guy was easily 6'6", 280 pounds, not an ounce of fat, just got out of jail for manslaughter. He'd been in, locked up for 10 years. And there's no such thing as an ex hells angel. And this guy had had a gallon of wine before he even hit my door. Well, he's shooting pool, and he takes a cube of chalk, and he crushed it in his bare hand. He got mad. And then I started having some ladies in there, and his language was getting a little bit. And I went over, and I said, you know, you got to clean it up a little bit. Fuck you! No problem. <laughs> yeah, and there was two ladies there. They asked me the next day, why don't you do something with him? This guy gets a speeding ticket. He's going to jail for life. What could I do with this mountain? I said, look around you. There is not anything in here worth dying for. I was just glad I wasn't married and had a wife there at that time. I'd be taking a beating of my life, and he'd probably kill me too. But, uh, yeah, people like that kind of upset me a little. <laughs> Thank God he never came back. Yes, sir. Yeah, I didn't know I had the glass top, but yeah, nothing new under the sun. Paypair was doing that 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, and I was just wondering if you had any, you know, I don't know, there's, there's debate or comments about, well, it's got the shallow cap, kind of like a zizzle or whatever, you know, but it's but it's a heavy duty machine and all that, but uh, the comments were like, well, the cabinet's really going to hurt you because, you know, it doesn't look like the standard cabinet. And um, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you happen to see it. Yeah, I've seen it. You know, I don't really have an opinion on it because I just don't. I mean, it's like when Multimorphic started out, they weren't going to do a back box. Oh, then they learned real quick that, well, everybody wants a back box because they're used to them. They never used to have them, but we got them now. So, you know, anytime you take something away, people think you're jipping them, and that, that can come back to bite you. Yeah, sometimes change is just hard to uh, accept or, you know, adopt. Yep. Whatever, and Jerry's a genius. I mean, the guy's an engineer and stuff, too, but, you know, you, you got to build the game that you know your customers want. You can't build the game that you think's great. They want nine thousand dollars for that. The Turner thing. Well, let's see. About eleven grand. Let's see, two grand more. You get yourself a nice uh, uh, thousand. Yeah, what's the new one? The new From Barrel of Fun. Labyrinth. 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 <laughs> Yeah, getting forgetful. No, I mean, uh, you know, you get up in that price range, there's just too many other choices. You know, 500 bucks more, you get yourself a nice remake. Uh, you know, Stern, you're probably being a Stern Pro uh, at that point. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to fly or not. I mean, I, d I don't know their uh, cost to build. I don't know their reasoning, but I look at it as, uh, you know, no coin to run it. It's kind of a different cabinet and everything else. To me, it's kind of, you know, looks like it might have a, a lot against it rather than for it. You know, anybody here in this room going to buy one? No, nope. see, it's kind of a problem. Now, anybody in this room, if you had the money, would you buy Labyrinth? Well, yeah, hands start going up. That's uh, that's what I mean, you know, that uh, not sure it's the brightest idea or why they did it or if they can, uh, you know, turn it around and make it popular, but. And we don't, yeah, we don't want to pass that on to our customers. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I don't, I don't know the reasoning or why they're doing it. I mean, I don't, in this day and age, I wouldn't wish anybody anything bad, even somebody I don't like, unless I get to do it to them. But <laughs> What? Would you quit fidgeting over there? Well, I, I, I see these hands going around, then you don't have any questions. Yes, sir. Oh, if I had money, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. I want to get my nose under the hood and back box, but there's just too long of lines. Because, I, you know, the one guy I wanted to talk to, you know, I'm going through the line, excuse me, excuse me, I'm not putting in. We're just <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the uh, Kevin uh, Mortison or some darn thing, yeah, he, he'll said he'd get me any pictures. Because I asked for pictures of the play, uh, under the play field and back box, because I don't, you know, I don't have the money to buy one. It's not going to happen. But down the road, you know, and people on pin side, if they got questions or anything, I have an inkling of what's going on, I might be able to help them. Uh, yes and no. You know, the main thing, because like I said, I was test operator for Lieberman's for 19 years. Uh, video games, especially during the video fad, there were so many companies trying to make make the next best thing, and I usually stay away from their first game. You know, like when, uh, oh, God, I forget the year. I think it was 78. You know, there was a Atari hauled a game to the show, and everybody's like, what the hell is Atari thinking? It's called Lunar Lander. Then in uh, 79, you know, once again Atari, you know, they drag a game to the show and everybody's like, God, are they stupid? Nobody's gonna play that. That was, of course, called Asteroids. And then Namco had uh, Pac-Man and uh, they tried all over the world. They didn't have their own company then. They, they were doing the software or something, boards. They didn't have a production facility. And they were begging people to take it to the uh, fall show in uh, Chicago. And finally Midway put, uh, you know, two in cabinets hauled it down there. <laughs> we know what happened with Pac-Man. Of course, then the downside of that, the next company, the next year, there's a company in Italy that built a game. And see, then people were looking for the dumbest game of the show because they thought that'd be the next big thing. And there was an Italian company that made a game called Frogs. Not Frogger, Frogs. And they made 100,000 of them. They were ready to go. And as long as I know, they're still rotting in warehouses over in Italy somewhere. So it was the worst game of the show, but nobody bought it. And, you know, and Williams didn't plan to close out pins. You know, until it hits the street, nobody knows what it's going to do, what people like and don't like. And, and it always comes down to the customer. You know, I treated my Jersey Jack uh, Pirates of the Caribbean LE for my Godfather Collector Edition. I thought it was a smart move for me. Uh, I know a lot of people like pirates, but for me, you know, I'm about to cash box. You know, I can't be passionate about it, and a cash box don't lie. And that game, for me, was mediocre at best. Any pinball set in that same spot would do the same money. So it became something I could trade. And also, I, I played it. I didn't think it was fun. Anything video game or pinball that I think is fun usually goes on to be a really good you know, game for me, and I didn't really like Pirates. I didn't think it was fun. Godfather's a blast. I love that. And, of course, that kind of screws up my plan. Uh, my front row, once JJP got rid of me, well, that's my Chicago gaming games now. And then I put Godfather right in the middle. I can have five pins in a row. And then when Pulp Fiction comes in, I was going to pull it out, put it somewhere else, and put Pulp Fiction there. Godfather's doing too good. I can't move it. So now I don't know where I'm in the hell I'm going to put Pulp Fiction when it comes in. <laughs> Coy. How many different pinball games have you have you pulled for your location of, of your career? How many have what? How many pinball games have you pulled for your location? Oh man, I couldn't I mean like when a video fad was on eighty one, I bought forty two brand new video games that year. I mean, pin, pin, and because pinball had highs and lows, you know, like when Pinball 2000 was coming out, I was down to like six pins. And then there was times where I had thirteen, fifteen, eighteen pins. Man, I couldn't even, I'd have to go through tax records and stuff. 15 years, 20 years, 30. I'm thinking here too. Let's see, 79, 50. Jesus, it's probably been over 400 or something. I mean, I'm just looking at, you know, say four or five a year over 50 years. You know, that's a, you know, about a long time. 
And of course, some of this stuff, I don't even remember some of the stuff. One time I was going through tax stuff. I had Tato's Yo-Yo video game. I don't even remember that damn thing. <laughs> How the hell did I have that? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, excuse me one second. Well, first thing is sales. You know, if you're a manufacturer and I call up my European distributor and, hey, I've got XYZ coming, uh, send us one or two games. You know, then you, you, know, you call up your distributor and tell them that, uh, hey, I've got Taylor Swift coming, send me two containers. You know, the first thing you shoot yourself is the sales. be willing to lose a shitload of money and maybe close. I mean, pretty decent, pretty simple. I mean, it's, I mean, he, he, you know, once you open Pandora's box, you, you can't close it. Yeah, Stern was probably one of the last ones with things like High Roller Casino and stuff. And, Yeah, but a lot of that was due to Pat Lawler. You know, they, uh, in order to entice Pat to come in and build a game, uh, and there, there was, I, when I was out there for training, I walked in on a license meeting. <laughs> I'm like, oops, sorry. <laughs> and uh, they wanted Pat to do it, and Pat wouldn't do a license. And he gave them two proposals. They moved forward on one, one and it became dialed in. But that was all, you know, in order to get Pat back in the game, because otherwise he would have never built another pinball machine. So to get Pat back in the game, they left him do it. But that was like a unique situation. It probably never happened again. I don't know of any uh, one, uh, you know, Steve Ritchie, Pat Lawler, uh, Joe Balser, uh, Keith Elwin. I don't know if any one uh, designer right now has got the pull to be able to pull that off. You know, here's the titles, you build that one, whether we like it or not. You know, sometimes I wish things were different. I mean, and of course, uh, some of them, I don't know, you know, maybe one way around it would do, like Medieval Madness was a blatant ripoff rip of uh, Monty Python Holy Grail. Attack from Mars was a blatant ripoff of Mars Attacks. You know, maybe if you could do something creative that way, but I just, I just don't see it happening because you know, the market's tough enough and it's probably going to get tougher. I don't know anybody wants to risk it. More questions? Oh, say, hang on a second. I was looking at her and then you were talking. I'm sorry, we'll take yours, sir. No, no, go ahead, sir. Uh, Golden Tee's dead and that's probably going to be going bye bye. And uh, now one thing, you know, through the years, you know, you get people come in and they feel obligated to say something. Oh, you don't have Pac-Man. Not that they were going to actually play it, but, you know, they just seem to got to say something when they come in. And uh, back about eight years ago or something, on Craigslist, I saw a 60 in one cabinet. It had like eight Pac-Man and it had five Galagas and some different stuff. And a guy wanted like, Know, four or five hundred bucks. I called him up. Hey, if you drop it off, I'll give you cash. So he dropped it off. I got it as a joke. It was like in September because I thought, you know, next person comes in looking for a Pac-Man, you know, there's 10 in there. And uh, yeah, I figured if it didn't do anything, uh, well, by November, I'd uh, throw it on Craigslist and sell it for Christmas, get my money back. <laughs> Damn thing's done okay. And then the other one that didn't pan out, somebody comes in and starts talking eight ball deluxe to me. I want to just kill him. I didn't, you know, back in the day, bally pins didn't get good play in my uh, arcade, and I didn't have 8-Ball Deluxe in the day. Gottlieb was king for years. And uh, when uh, Williams closed, I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? 
So I started buying up NOS parts and stuff. I thought, well, if I could bring a game back, restore it to like new, I'd have a pinball machine for right now until, you know, because we had air hockey, we had foosball, you know, we had a little video game fad, a big video game fad, until something new comes along, which never happened. But I thought, you know, I'd, uh, I could get by. And uh, the first thing I accumulated enough parts in the game for was 8-Ball Deluxe, an LE. And uh, I had found an NOS play field, had it clear-coated. I had all new plastics. I had uh, clear plastics. I had original brand new pop bumper caps, repainted the cabinet, brought the electronics up to speed. I mean, besides the cost of the game, I had over five grand in this project. This was before all the repro parts, everything. Yeah, and that game was doing two, three bucks a week. It was really miraculous. So that's when I sold off all the parts. I had trouble selling the damn thing. I finally sold it to Aaron Getsky at Pinball Warehouse, I think, for nine and a half or nine hundred bucks. And of course, people too were like, "Well, if you go sell it, I would have bought it. I must miss her for sale sign on it for six months." Oh man, what a bloodbath! But you try stuff. I mean, it's like you know, in the mid uh, 2000s there, before the economy turned. I tried to bring back some of the classic video games because I thought, well, as a quarter banger, kids might play them and another reason for people to stop in. And I was told they'd take in money for a day or two and stand, and that's exactly what happened. I had a nice Wizard War, I had a Mint Bubbles and a Mint Satan's Hollow. And they were supposedly, two of them come from a major collector in Chicago, top of the line guy. You had to recap the monitors, rebuild the power supplies. I'm like, this is a top of the line video game guy. What the hell do the bad ones look like? You know, playing at home once in a while is a whole lot different at 12 hours a day and uh, seven days a week. But that, that was a total bloodbath. I mean, I was happy to see him go, but it was, it was worth trying. You know, you try stuff, it just didn't pan out. It's like for a long time, I was selling pinball parts. Because I thought, well, if somebody needed something in a hurry or didn't want to pay shipping on one part, well, if they come in, they probably play a few games and something and get their part. And that never materialized either, so I pretty much quit selling that. Now, if somebody comes in and if they need something, if I got spares, I might, I might help them. But, you know, that's not a guarantee because I'm not going to run my supply down and I got to order parts and pay sales tax and shipping and stuff. We had another one I thought that I missed. Did you have another one back there? No, the other guy's sitting there. I'm going to make one up. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Jackson, Dan, Blocker. Wait, do I get number? Yeah. Well, thank you. What the hell's that? <laughs> oh, little monkeys. Oh, you've seen my YouTube channel with all the monkey videos. Yeah, anybody that's ever checked out my monkey, my YouTube channel, besides some of the uh, Chicago gaming uh, uh, tech stuff, there's the monkey videos, too. If you ever want to waste 10, 15 seconds of your life and never get it back, some of those are pretty good. Oh, cool. Oh, geez, I forgot. I should have probably, even though it kind of raped my uh, seminar, they're having that pizza party over there at 930 if anybody wants to go running out of here. And I promise I might not make fun of you. And Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, help at these seminars is tough. You know, the first one I ever gave, I had Andrew Barney and three other guys, and they want to know, what do we do? And I was like, you stand like linebackers. You get in front of the podium, and when the crowd rushes the stage, you hold them off so I can get the hell out of here. Yeah, we were talking about some of the other great things, too. Uh, the movie, it's a short movie, 15 minutes about the donut girl. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it. You know, a guy gets mad and smashes an attack from Mars back glass. We will premiered that at Expo some years ago. And that expo, that was just bizarre. I'd uh, brought in beer, which got locked in a room. They had a separate room where they were having the heads of the shows and stuff would get together and compare notes so that they wouldn't you know, conflict with the dates of other shows. And uh, my beer was in there. So finally, uh, Rob Burke sent my beer out in the hall. <clears throat> it wasn't my beer anymore. Somebody stole my good beer, and this was like lesser beer. But we needed beer, so we hauled it in. Got it nice and everything's all cool. Then we started showing the movie and the projector broke. Well, first the projector was in that room too, but we were able to get the projector. Well, of course that breaks. 
So then we were able to find another projector. My bottle opener breaks. I mean, every inch of the way, everything possible to go wrong was oh, it's just a disaster. Finally, we've had a good time. We've had the beer. We've had the mugs. We've had the questions, answers. Everybody's done. We're wrapping it up. I think Martin's putting away the microphones. Mike Pesa comes in. And you've seen Mike once in a while. He can get mad. He is bright red, and he is just stomping in the room. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong now? And he comes up to me like that. I'm sorry. Who are you, and what did they do with the room? I'm like, please, like, but he'd heard everything. <laughs> I never heard that man say, I'm sorry, my life is just, it's just, I'm like, who the hell are you? <laughs> God, I love Mike. He's a great guy. Uh oh. Yes. Okay, so I don't know if you can actually answer this, but I've been wondering about this for years. No, I'm I'm never getting married again. I mean I really appreciate your uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, not in the guys. Um, <laughs> well, I, you know, down deep inside I am a lesbian. <laughs> I love women. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, uh, uh, you know, get any, go down that path, but. Uh, anyway, so when me, me and my sister were kids, basically. Wait, wait one second. Do you have a, a close friend or a wife or a mate or anything? Uh, kind of. <laughs> oh, can we have a threesome? <laughs> okay. Hey, you started this shit, not me. Well, it's, uh, you know, 1991, 01, 11, 21. You're talking 34-year, 32-year-old game. You know, I've kind of gotten over wanting to maintain 30-year-old crap. But, you know, Funhouse is great in the day for me. I uh, replaced the play field twice on mine. You know, wore it down to nothing. And at that point, I, was, I inquired from Williams, you know, how much would a brand-new plug-and-play play field be if you got them? And it was like 1895. We'll see at that time, you know, three, four hundred more, I get a whole brand new pinball machine. And that was a big screw up on my mistake because that would have been one of the diamond plate ones. <laughs> Live and learn. And fun you know, it's one of those things I, I wouldn't want to maintain one anymore. And then Rudy's head, oh God, it's like they hung it in midair and then you got to work on it. And that, that's a, the sole reason why I never had a road show in my business. I had them brought in for events, but not on my lineup. Not bad enough, you got one Rudy head, you got two Rudy heads. You got Red and Ted, and you got to pull Ted out of there to work on Red. Yeah, I need this grief. It was great. And, of course, you got to bear in mind, too, this stuff was built to be used for three, four years and junked. They weren't building it for 20 years later, and then you got to work on this stuff and figure out what's wrong and find the parts, and which uh, now there is more available now than ever before. But Hey, did we get Joe and Kevin mugs? These are two really good customers of mine. Joe's a guinea from Joyzy, but he's really from Philadelphia. And he's just like, if you ever talk to this guy, he's like out of the cast of The Sopranos. He's funnier than shit. There, now we got him happy. Are you asking for like later today, you and me? Or? Be the best 20 seconds of your life. <laughs> no, I, you know, being married, that kind of cured me of uh, women. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, just because she had a fiance last two years of my marriage I didn't know about and bled me dry money-wise doesn't mean I, you know, and truthfully, uh, uh, I wouldn't mind having somebody in my life again. The problem is I won only one time, one time in my life, I ever let somebody get close to me. We ain't doing that one again. Dan, what are you doing over there? Are you okay, Scott? Oh, I'm glad you're okay. 
So we got more questions? Anybody want to play with the monkeys? <laughs> oh, is that? Is these things where you can hang these monkeys together? Oh, cool. Well, I know what I'm doing at work tomorrow. I've, I've, I've worked my whole life. I was four years old scrubbing play fields. I didn't have a kidhood. That's why the one thing I swore, the reason I got married, I'm the last of my bloodline and I wanted to have a kid, but the one thing I swore is I ever have a kid, he's having a kidhood. You know, he ain't working until if he, you know, is old enough and wants to go get a job or something, but he's going to have a kidhood. I, I was going to guarantee that. Of course, it worried the wife too, because I said, well, when you come, you know, bail Junior out, you know, I hope you bail me out too. <laughs> Because I'm going to relive my kidhood with my kid. That was one of the great, uh, I, I would have made a better grandparent than a parent, but, you know, when you see the people with their little kids and, you know, see their first Robin, their first Rainbow, and all the stuff like that, uh, you know, that would have been a great grandparent. <laughs> you know, I always thought the worst, too, you know, do you want a little boy or you want a little girl? What in the hell do you do with a little girl when they're old enough to date? I mean, I know what I've done to women through the years, you know, and, yeah, they and one of my friends, he looked at his, she, his daughter was probably 11, 12 years old, uh, starting to notice men, and he looked at her, you're not dating now, you're 42. <laughs> yeah. We got mugs left? We have eight mugs left. Anybody not get a mug and too embarrassed to ask a question? We had a defect? Yeah, last time we had a bunch of them. I didn't know we had one. I didn't hear anything rattling. Who wants a mug? Who wants an extra mug? I don't know. What's your buddy's name? Oh, Parker. Yeah, he's a great guy. Hey, Martin, you want one from your... God, what the hell's your buddy's name in England? The one that came here years ago. Big Prince fan. Oh, hey. Aid. Aid. Yeah, want to bring a mug back for Aid? Give Martin another mug. Give Martin all the mugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did at Pintastic that one year when we had too many. I was handing them out by the tray. <laughs> Kevin, Joe, you guys need another mug? Okay, we don't want to have to drag this stuff home. Oh, poor bastard. Yeah, all oh, people, they're the worst. Uh, I was always sorry my parents weren't rich. I'd be on a Chase Lounge right now with a coconut, with a tropical drink, paper umbrella, and a bendy straw. Watching sharks get swimmers, one an hour would be nice. But no, I gotta work till I die. Pineapple? No, I want a coconut with a tropical drink in it. And a paper umbrella and a bendy straw. Don't forget the bendy straw. Though I did uh, the last Powerball, I did, you know, when I got up to a billion, whatever, I did finally break down and bought a, a couple of them along that run. I'm about seven bucks ahead. I didn't win the big one, but. You think I'm a jerk now? Just think if I'd be a jerk. Well, if you took cash after taxes, you have about six, seven hundred million. Oh, could you imagine me with six or seven hundred million dollars? <laughs> First thing would be my air pinball tournament at Expo. Got ten people lined up, facing this way. Got numbers on their backs, and they're playing air pinball. And then the crowd votes for who's doing the best bear, bear, uh, bear pinball, air air pinball, and then the winner gets a hundred grand. I guarantee you I'd get 10 people for that one. <laughs> you guys leaving? Hey. Oh, man, hurry up. Yeah, in case they throw, every, in case they throw everybody out at midnight, get, get going. Hey, thanks for coming, guys. Hope you have a nice evening. <laughs> God love her. Have a great evening. Safe trip home, guys.
Uh oh, Jackson's got more beer. Huh? Oh, we still got mugs left. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Okay. Give Coy another one. Coy's been around for forever. I don't remember the first time I met you, but I've always liked you. You're great. Well, I didn't say to play him for money. I just say he's a great guy. So what we got left? Two left? Yeah. Sir, did you get a mug? Did you get a mug? Yes? <laughs> no, you're not. Nobody's leaving here until we're out of mugs. Oh, COVID? Yeah, just or just climate? Yeah, people are crazy up there. Like, you can't be out in town so many after the past. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm thinking weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, the bad stuff, you're only seeing 5 or 10% on the news. You know, when Nadia took the teeth out of the police, the Minneapolis police were always aggressive, but they kept a lid on things. And uh, the crime has just gone through the roof. I mean, a lot of people just refuse to go to Minneapolis. I'm in Hopkins, so it had, hadn't really affected me. And then, of course, anybody comes in my door, I kind of got an attitude problem. They know they got to behave. I remember one time, uh, God, what was it? Double Dragon come out. You know, one of the first fighting games where you could fight each other. And uh, I had that kind of situated. I had a fighting game here, that game here, and that game here. And I had some Crips playing this one. I had some IPK guys, that's the jail version of the Klan. And I had some other group playing this. And one of my friends like, you know, if these guys were any results, they'd be killing each other. Well, they know they got a behavior. Whole lot of difference. So you're bringing unity yeah. to the people. Is what you're saying. No, I think they're scared of me. <laughs> yeah, I had a bunch of Crips one time, I was looking for a guy. And I talked to the leader, and I said, well, I know the deal. He must have molested one of their daughters, a little four- or five-year-old girl. And, I mean, those guys should be blown off the planet. I told him, I don't care what you do to them. It can happen in here. But do whatever you got to do. And I was in the bathroom. I come out, and I had, like, eight crips chasing this guy around my business. <laughs> and I went up to the leader, and I told him, I said, you promised me this wouldn't happen here. He said, I gave my word. Everybody put the pool cues back, and they hauled him away. I don't know what they ever did with him, but he ended up going to jail for killing somebody else. But No, I've, I've always been the opinion, you know, if you can hurt a kid, blow him off the planet. You know, when you're an adult, you know, sometimes if you get in trouble or something, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been there. Maybe you could have avoided it. Uh, maybe it's your fault. You know, I can put some, uh, you know, look at it different ways. But you're hurt, hurting a kid. You don't belong on this planet. There's just no excuse for that. And a kid's scarred for life. You know, who wants to carry that burden around? So are we out of mugs now? Yep, two more. You got to pinball all that shit. I'll take another one to help you with all the questions. Hey, two more. <laughs> we got one more now. One more. Uh, one more mug. God, the fuse is just taking so long. Plus the one that's sharp. Oh, plus the one that's sharp. Yeah. Yeah, where's Roger Sharp when we need him? We could give it to him. Now we go give, give the hey yeah give pro, the project pinball the good one. Oh, yeah. We're done. Any other questions? We're ready to go. I can't tell you any more dirty story, stories or anything because a few I got I probably get in trouble. Hmm. Well, my own my own personal opinion, it's a work of art you can play. And I mean, Harry Williams said the ball is wild. He's right, you know, that ball is rolling and that ball is spinning. You can play three games in a row and each one's different. But like when I used to shop Theater Magic, one of the prettier pins and you stand back and look at that, that is a work of art. And you can actually, I mean, you go to you can go to Lerve and look at the Mona Lisa, you know, you can't get in within three, four feet of it. They don't let you play with it or touch it or anything. You know, pinball is something that you can physically, 
And also, I've always thought that the railroad steam engine was the closest thing man ever invented. It's closest to being alive. I've always thought pinball was probably, after that, the next thing that was closest to something being alive. Because there's just so many variations in a game play. Happy? Okay, well, let's all run up and get a free pizza if it's still going on. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. A few people actually thought I was going to hold him here until he got rid of all the mugs. and <laughs> So he's still got a few left. But I really, really appreciate you coming. Thank you.